What a world we live in. By the time I've gotten my thoughts gathered together and my words formulated well enough to vent coherently on the latest atrocity emanating from our government, it gets trumped by an even more outrageous action by these craven and cowardly creatures that inhabit, infect, and defile that bastion of greed and corruption that is our nation's capital. Have we really gone so far down that rabbit hole that the commander and thief can appear on national television and inform the world that not only was he aware that his top deputies were vetting, approving, even choreographing the torture of human beings, he was cheering them on. He's proud of his actions. And it's not that long ago that this nation not only condemned torture, not only did we execute the people found guilty of committing torture, we executed the lawyers found guilty of telling the torturers that it was okay to torture someone else. In the short half century that I've been alive, we've managed to transform a nation led by a retired general whose last words in office were to warn us of the danger that a military industrial complex might bring. How sadly, prophetically, he underestimated the course of our nation. The military industry didn't just acquire the undue influence that he feared. It has been aided and abetted by the congressional creatures that soon after voting to spend billions of dollars on the military, leave Congress to work in those industries that they have just so richly endowed. And all the while, the media are working overtime, making sure not only that you don't question, but that you join in the cheering for the next war of choice. The three so-called leading contenders, face it, the number one choice is still none of the above, which is why less than half of those eligible bother to vote. But all those three agree on one thing. That is building an even larger military machine. Seven hundred billion dollars is what they all want to spend on the military in 2009. Let me repeat that. Seven hundred billion dollars is what they all want to spend on the military in 2009. Seven hundred billion dollars on the juggernaut that has become the defining characteristic of our United States. It used to be that the Statue of Liberty stood as our national symbol. Now, it's a stealth bomber raining down terror from 30,000 feet. We're now the nation that, with 10,000 nuclear bombs, 5,000 of which are on missiles under hair trigger alert, yet scared senseless that maybe Iran might actually sometime in the future build one. And the three witless contenders are crapping all over themselves in their rush to condemn that evil nation, that scourge of frustration that all by itself is the reason our oh-so-precious military hasn't successfully conquered Iraq. No matter how much of that country we've pounded into dust, 
highly contaminated by depleted uranium dust, I might add. Poisonous dust that our oh-so-precious military is breathing and eating and bringing home to share with their families. As I watch these three spewing the lies that the White House is pushing, the lies that the Post and the Times are repeating by the very same liars that fooled so many into supporting the war in Iraq, I see in their eyes that same animation that brightens the eyes of the White House resident and his puppet master whenever they talk about torture, about death, about war. I don't know about the rest of you, but after 28 years, I feel that it sure would be nice if the eyes of the chief executive of our nation didn't brighten and shine with excitement when they talk about war. Now, end of the circle file.